Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to take a closer look at the top three semiconductor companies, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. And more importantly, we're going to take a closer look at what big updates came out last week uh, for all these semiconductor giants. Like always, this is the best place you're going to find any semiconductor news. So make sure to hit that thumbs up, that subscribe button. So let's get started all right so i think the first thing we should do is take a closer look at price performance it does seem like it is a nice day for tech stocks right now we can see intel corporation is up roughly 2.4 percent as i am recording but overall we can see some of the other players amd and video are also up in the past five days intel is up roughly 2.04 percent sitting next to that 37 dollars like i mentioned earlier now if we take a closer look at amd amd right now is sitting at $107. Again, we can see kind of this bullish trend in the semiconductor and just kind of the tech space right now. Um, it, AMD at 107 up roughly two percent in the past five days amd is pretty much flat on on, on the past five days basis i do want to say amd is probably one of my favorite articles or kind of solutions or updates that came out last week uh, now if we take a closer look at nvidia nvidia is also dominating up roughly 1.3 percent sitting at 460 dollars in the past five days nvidia is up roughly 1.6 percent as well uh, but we can see how volatile some of these days have been we have seen peaks in the past five days of 474 and we have seen lows of 450 so roughly a 20 dollar price shift from high to low in just five days finally i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now with that link you get a promotional offer for the subscription service now let's continue with today's episode so the first company i want to take a closer look at is amd on october 10th so last week they did announce that they were going to acquire an open source ai software expert called not.ai um, and they do mention that not.ai will accelerate deployments of optimized ai solutions on amd's high performance platforms and bolster amd open source strategy uh, so one thing that we have known is right we're, we're, we're in this world where semiconductor companies can no longer just be a hardware company and they can't only be a one chip stop right so previously right we've had amd only be a cpu to some extent intel really only be a cpu and video really be only a gpu but in the past years uh, past few years we have seen kind of a shift where you need to be a cpu holder a dpu holder a gpu holder and now we see all three of these giants kind of combat each other in numerous numerous chips um now it's not longer that you can own it, it's no longer just a hardware company right where back then it was okay if you were just in hardware chip base now you need to be a hardware and a software solutions especially with this kind of trend that we're seeing in the ai market and right now nvidia is definitely dominating in this space um which is really impacting and forcing uh, the hand of amd and intel to really push in more software we've talked about intel in the past few few weeks where they kind of announced no new software solutions and we can see amd is really focusing on it as well but there might be going through the acquisition uh, the acquisition route which is nothing wrong right so an acquisition like this can overall help amd in a few ways first it overall expands their ai solutions it improves their software solution and it also gives them uh kind of one i want to say like an inside man right so uh open source ai software the team at not node.ai probably know a lot of the ins and out of what's happening in that industry uh so they can be like a inner mole to some extent for amd and look it mentioned like hey look amd if you really want to focus in the ai market this is how we see future workloads go uh so obviously with this optimization they'll be able to optimize their ai hardware from their amd instincts which is their mi 300s their amd uh ryzen processors which are their cpus also their epic processors which are their server cpus uh and all the other solutions like the system on chips their fpgas that they have acquired through the silence market uh so they didn't really mention the overall price i'm guessing this is going to be a very very small acquisition um the biggest thing is probably going to be the talent and being able to synergize um the two teams and be able to kind of grab the information from this open source ai software company and kind of bringing it to the engineer and hardware side as well so 
pretty cool news. Nothing, I, I mean, I don't think at the moment AMT is going to combat or be anywhere near the levels of NVIDIA in the software space, but we are definitely seeing more traction of companies, like I mentioned, like AMT, like Intel, and other semiconductor companies really focus here in the software space. Uh, so next, I want to take a closer look at my favorite semiconductor company, NVIDIA. But before we go any further, guys, I do want to say thank you for the support. We just hit 28.3 thousand subs. I'm trying to hit 30,000 by the end of the year so if you haven't make sure to hit the thumbs up the subscribe button um also if you want weekly exclusive videos to the semiconductor program i do weekly deep dives or sometimes right now i'm kind of waiting for all these earnings to pop up and do really deep dives on all those earnings click join to learn more if you want a special offer check out fool.com slash jose free newsletter at jose .com, and free semiconductor news at semiconductorwatch.com all right, so the next company I want to take a closer look at is NVIDIA. And NVIDIA, luckily for us, they are the AI king, and they have so many new solutions that they announced almost on a daily basis of how maybe startups use them. So I want to say if you are an NVIDIA shareholder, definitely check out their newsroom. They always share case of some of the new products that they're working with or how some of their of startups are using NVIDIA to kind of revolutionize future technology. And I do believe that's a great way to start. So the first thing I want to take a closer look at is NVIDIA on October 11th, so again last week, announced a new open source solution called NVIDIA Nemo Steer LM, which has companies customize models response during inference. And that's very, very important. We're going to see this. Um, but this new technique is a way to tune large language models more simply and quickly so they align with the user needs. So for those that are not familiar, right now, this kind of new solution, Nemo Steer LM, lets companies define models to dial in a model's response at, as it is running. And that's very important right this is during the process called inference that the large language model is running um, and, and unlike right now where current methods for you to kind of customize in large language models you have to kind of retrain the model and do several things over and over again so obviously this has a lot of use cases and also helps companies save time and money um, because they're able to kind of dial that model during its running process opposed to retraining it um, and for example a a custom model previously um, if you want it to be maybe a custom model for an accounting team maybe for a sales team maybe for an engineering team you would probably have to train it in three different ways now that custom model with the right amount of dials using steer llm you don't have to kind of retrain it over and over and over again you can kind of just use that one custom la uh, large language model and then be able to tune it while it's running so that's going to help companies save a lot in time and money they even showed a solution of how a company company like this can use it for um, the gaming market, right? For NPCs. NPCs kind of have a very, very boring dialogue where they usually only say one thing, um, but maybe with large language models, they'll be able to kind of make the game a little bit more engaging, even for the non-playable characters um, that we have so many throughout the games. What I think is pretty interesting, though, is NVIDIA. Everybody kind of gives NVIDIA so much nonsense right now because this is a company that invested a lot earlier on software. Uh, so now the um, I want to say people are punishing NVIDIA for it being well prepared. They're saying, hey, look, why are you open source? Why are you only a closed software solution with CUDA? Um, you're kind of creating this monopoly in the market. But in my opinion, I think that's crazy how because you were so well prepared, now the market kind of hates you. Um, because you did so many great things for this industry, now the market hates you because you're not an open source solution. So NVIDIA, what they are doing is now when they're releasing new software solutions, solutions, they're also kind of releasing an open source software for developers to try out. So Steer LM has, is available as an open source software. Uh, so I do believe now NVIDIA is showcasing, hey, look, we can play both games. Now, if you might be a user or an enterprise who needs that special type of security, special type of support, or special type, uh, yeah, pretty much special type of support from NVIDIA, you can also get Steer LM, um, but you can get it in the enterprise version. So now you'll be kind of paying for that closed solution um, and, and kind of get that that kind of support from NVIDIA. So it does seem like NVIDIA is playing this really well, in my opinion. They're doing it with both the kind of open source and the closed software. Uh, they do mention that Steer LM method works on all the models supported on Nemo, uh, which is the AI software solution that helps with developing of large language models. Um, 
And they do mention including popular community built pre-trained large language models such as Llama 2 and Bloom. Though Llama 2 obviously is the one that Meta has uh, and is very, very popular at the moment. Uh, so I do believe that's great news. The other thing I want to mention is on October 10th, NVIDIA Showcase, uh, Adobe has been doing amazing. They've been announcing a lot of generative AI solutions for their creative suite uh, and their creative solution. And NVIDIA is just kind of out here showcasing that, hey, look, if you use NVIDIA's um, hardware, you're going to be able to save a lot of time using uh, these solutions, using Premiere Pro, using maybe Photoshop, using the generative AI solutions that Adobe has, especially since we are seeing this market where artificial intelligence is coming more into local devices opposed to cloud devices. You know what products are great for doing local AI solutions? GPUs. Uh, so NVIDIA is showcasing that, hey, look, um, right now we have GPUs. You don't need to buy anything extra. Our GPUs are well for in local device of AI workloads. And I do believe this is going to help push a little bit more into NVIDIA's more expensive laptops and the higher tier laptops. Normally Normally when I buy, I, I work on a laptop, right? And when I buy a laptop, I tend to go with at least a 70 or higher. Now my next laptop, I'm definitely going to get the 90 series at least um, because I'm seeing all these amazing solutions that accelerated computing can help out with my content creation, with my generative AI solutions that I've been playing around with. Uh, and I do believe this is going to be a big push from creators that, hey, not only do you need an NVIDIA laptop, but it would also be awesome if you have an NVIDIA laptop with top tier graphics. So I do believe this is going to help NVIDIA sell a little bit more consumer products in the future, especially if we continue to see AI workloads come to local devices. Now, the second, the third company we're going to take a closer look at is Intel. I know this is your favorite semiconductor company. So Intel on October 10th uh, announced their uh, a new card within their current generation so the arc 580 the arc 580 is meant for 1080p high settings on certain games uh so it's a pretty kind of uh, i want to say entry level to mid entry level card right 1080p is it, at high settings is definitely pretty interesting uh they do mention that this card is roughly 180 dollars so again a very entry price point in my opinion this is not something that would make or break the bank for intel in my opinion but it just continues to showcase that hey this company continues to focus in the gpu market what i really want to talk about intel is their raptor lake refresh so the company just introduced their 14th generation processor uh, which is just a refresh of their raptor lake which was their 13th generation usually this is what happened refreshes like this are just a better kind of performance uh, a, a small boost in performance compared to the previous generation until we see kind of a huge generation leap. Uh, so the company is expected to release these, I believe, this week, which is great news. Um, there are some kind of products, uh, kind of uh, images out there that kind of show Intel's benchmarks. Obviously, Intel will kind of tune them themselves a little bit better compared to the competition. Uh, but they do mention that Intel's Gen 9 14900K, which would be their top of the line CPU, is way better than uh, AMD's Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, which is AMD's top tier in certain mar in certain games, right? We can see in certain games it underperforms, but there is a good portion of the games where they overperform. Uh, and they continue to show this case, this solution, over and over again that they have excellent gaming performance and also excellent productivity performance now they also not only kind of showcase their product with intel's um with AMD's competition, but luckily for us, they also kind of showcase their performance against their previous generation. Uh, so here we can see the orange is their 12th generation, which is their standard 1X. Uh, then it's their 13th generation, and now is their 14th generation. So versus their 12th generation, there are certain um, workloads like in Adobe, where it's roughly like 63% faster. Their lowest is like an Autodesk, where it's roughly 14% faster compared to the 12th generation. Uh, so so pretty interesting. I, I it, it's interest. Uh, what I'm I interested to see is Intel continuing to evolve in their CPU space, eventually maybe becoming the leader again in CPU leadership, which is what they're really discussing. The other thing is right now we are kind of in this slowdown in the consumer market. 
even though inventory corrections have picked up or, or the bottom of the inventory correction for the PC space is over, uh, I do believe we're still seeing kind of a slowdown not a slowdown, but a weak um, PC market compared to what we're normally used to. Uh, so for Intel to be releasing something like this at a time like this, unfortunately, it might be at the wrong time. Um, but the company continues to innovate. The company is doing well. We can see year to date, the company has given roughly 37% to investors. Uh, so interesting with their GPU, interesting with their CPU. Intel really did more on the consumer side. NVIDIA and AMD did a little bit more on the AI side. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.